Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to wrap up our unit on gases and show you how you can tie this into stoichiometry, one of my uh, favorite topics in chemistry. Uh, really, uh, stoichiometry and gas laws go together like peanut butter and jelly. They really do uh, dovetail nicely. You can use stoichiometry to get the information to go into a gas law, or you can use gas laws to get the information to go into stoichiometry. Typically, the, uh, the gateway between the two is going to be something to do with moles. And so keep an eye out for that information. Really, it comes down to deciding, uh, am I, are they giving me the information for a stoichiometry problem first, or are they giving me the information for a ideal gas law problem, typically ideal gas. But again, you can have changing uh, amounts of moles, too, with the supercombined gas law. So, uh, just to review a little bit about the stoichiometry. Remember that uh, typically stoichiometry deals with mass and amount relationships. So in a typical problem, you are going to have uh, grams of a substance, um, and then you're going to go to moles of that substance, and then use a balanced equation and go to moles of some other substance, be that another reactant or product, um, and then get back out to grams typically. But really what we need is the mole mole ratio there. That's the important part. Everything else is, is, is sort of uh, uh, unnecessary to true stoichiometry. And so the, the, the idea of gas stoichiometry is we don't necessarily have to start with grams. Um, and given a little creativity and imagination, th there's a ton of ways to get into moles, and some of which could come from the ideal gas laws. And again, we don't have to uh, uh, go to moles. Once we get moles, we can use moles and wrap that into an ideal gas law problem or solve for a lot of other stuff. So we just get a lot more options. So what we're going to do today is just look at one problem. And again, this looks probably pretty intimidating. It looks like there's a lot of information in there. I'm sure your eyes are going to start to glaze over. But why don't you take a moment and see what relevant information you can tease out of that problem. And then uh, we'll meet back together and we'll see if you came up with what I came up with. Hey, welcome back. All right, so here's what I had for the relevant information of this problem. It's telling me that it is uh, got a pressure of 752 millimeters of mercury. Um, it, it's asking me for my volume of ammonia in cubic centimeters. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to have to find the moles of ammonia. Uh, I am going to, I, I decided to use R uh, of atmospheres um, because the pressure they gave me was not in atmospheres of kilopascal, so I decided to go with um, atmospheres. Now again, some people do use 0 0.0821 instead of 0 0.08. 206. It's just three sig figs instead of four. Um, they gave me a temperature uh, in Celsius, which of course I'm going to have to get to uh, um, Kelvin. And then they gave me the mass of the uh, magnesium nitride. And that's a big red flag that we're dealing with a stoichiometry problem. If they're giving you mass information about one substance and asking you questions about another one, you're going to have to work your way through a balanced equation to get there. Now, I also noticed that this was an ideal gas law because notice none of the conditions are changing either. Um, if there was changing conditions, then that would say, okay, this must be combined gas law. Um, but since no conditions are changing, you can just write down PV and RT. And so I do have, a, I have more unknowns that I'm comfortable with. Um, so I'm going to have to use stoichiometry uh, to plug the hole of moles of ammonia. So the, so the meta way of solving this problem is to say, okay, well, they're giving me mass of, uh, of magnesium nitride. I'm going to use that to figure out the moles of ammonia. And once I find the moles of ammonia, I can use the ideal gas law to then find the volume. And so have a game plan when you have a problem like this, or else you're just going to get lost in the woods. <laughs> And so, again, I'm, uh, I'm going to skip showing the work for the molar mass of magnesium nitride, but I'm sure that you can. Uh, we have a balanced equation we're going to have to come up with here. So notice all the skill sets you're getting uh, uh, a review of here. And so given the information, magnesium nitride um, is going to react with water and form magnesium oxide and ammonia. And so they gave me enough information for states of matter, too. And so I went ahead and wrote a balanced equation uh, uh, with states of matter. Again, states of matter are sort of irrelevant at this point, but it's always nice to put that down if you have that information. And then I'm ready to go. Um, I can set up a stoichiometry problem starting with the 10 grams of magnesium nitride. Now, I'm going to uh, stop at moles. Uh, they're asking me for, you know, don't go to grams of ammonia because you're going to have to go back to moles anyway to get into the ideal gas law. And so uh, 10 divided by 100 times 2, um, again, so 10 over 100, uh, you're looking at about 0.1, and so times 2 is about 0.2. 
So I end up with 0.204 moles of ammonia. Don't worry about sig figs at this point. Just, you know, throw them all down and then we'll figure out sig figs at the end. Uh, I, I, I probably did a little bit of internal stuff here, but... Um, and so that's, that's, that's it. I've got the moles I need. Um, so now I'm ready to do the ideal gas law problem. I just got to clean everything up. And so while I have a little bit room, more room on this page, I'm going to convert my millimeters of mercury to atmospheres. I chose to use atmospheres. You could use kilopascals and use the other R. So let's readjust our relevant information with what we have. So I, I now have my pressure converted to kilopascals. Um, I've got my moles of ammonia. And I've got my temperature in Kelvin. And so now I've just got a classic ideal gas law problem. And so uh, I'm going to have PV equals NRT. I'm going to isolate V. And now I've got everything set up and ready to go. So I can plug it all in. So the whole point of doing that stoichiometry problem was to find my moles of ammonia. Uh, and then I'm going to multiply that by R. And I'm going to multiply that by temperature and divide that by uh, pressure. Atmospheres are going to cancel out. Um, Kelvin are going to cancel out. Moles are going to cancel out, and that leaves me with liters. And so I would collect uh, 5.03 liters of ammonia. All right. Um, now, it did ask, though, for cubic centimeters. So just don't forget to do the final conversion if they ask you for one. So in this case, I did a little two-step conversion. I did uh, liters to milliliters, and then I used the classic one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. And so I actually ended up, given the answer, I ended up with 5,030 cubic centimeters. And so, uh, and that's it. So that, that's really all we need to do for gas laws. We covered a lot of gas laws, covered a lot of territory. Now, there are some gas laws that we have not covered at this level, um, like Graham's Law of Fusion and some of the other gas laws that you'll run into at a more advanced level. But that information's out there. They're all pretty much about the same thing. So, anyway, so uh, we'll wrap up our, our friends here and then uh, call it a day. So they're all going to work together here to go fight the cowboys. <laughs> One more dodge over there. So, so there we go. Um, yeah, that's that's the unit there. That's gas laws. Hope you enjoyed um, learning about gases. They're a lot of fun. There's a lot of neat things to do with gases. So thanks for watching, and have a great uh, have a great day.